Hello and welcome to the Globe Trotter. It's my pleasure to introduce you an interesting personality who believes that destiny always smiles upon those who work hard and impossible is merely an excuse. Let's welcome Vidushana Tavitarana. Hi Vidusha, lovely to see you. What destination that you would love to speak about? And tell me if I'm wrong or right if I give the answer Ethiopia. Oh hell yes. Why why did you really want to why did you choose Ethiopia as a location? I didn't choose Ethiopia. Ethiopia chose me. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a holiday destination in any form. I went on an assignment. I had 7 days of solid work back to back uh hotel uh down to the hawas uh, um the equivalent of the boi um center there uh back again home late evenings and then the same grind for 7 days at a stretch right. and then my assignment in colombo got postponed by 2 weeks and i thought hey you know what uh, i have a week um there were places in ethiopia i always wanted to see That's how the whole thing started out. So you were on top of some kind of a cliff somewhere and looking down on a church that was, you know, hewn by utter sheer rock. Absolutely. Like something and, out of a movie. No, correct. And and the crazy part is, I mean, that's 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 my that was my impression of Ethiopia as well for the longest time, because all you generally see on media is poverty, um, you know, huge amount of hunger. um scarcity of water nomadic tribes and the works right but there are two parts to ethiopia i guess like any country um there is poverty clearly um but it's not the kind of poverty that you would generally think of it's a sim- very simple lifestyle um people have more or less what they need um from around the place um it is also one of the most fertile countries on the planet um and you have acres and acres and acres and acres of agriculture as far as the eye can see it's beautiful so if you go down to the knuckles range and go on top of a mountain and look down the valley below multiply that by 100 or 1000 times that's what really? the vistas of ethiopia will look like parts of it of course there are parts which are barren and uh, inaccessible as well tigray is is um, churches up on a mountain Vidush, why don't you tell about your hike up there? Because I found that was the most interesting part. <laughs> well, that was the scariest one. What Zafrana was talking about was was actually Tigray, right? And over there, you have a mountain range very similar to Knuckles um, that cuts across the landscape. And on top of almost all the mountain tops are little churches. Once again, rock hewn, but here they actually carve into the mountain side itself. Now. when i saw this and i read about it well national geographic had some fabulous reviews and i thought hey you know what must do this and this was one of the places i really wanted to go no matter what right. and i got very ambitious right and i said you know this entire region has full of uh, monasteries i'm going to visit three of them which is the most famous three and i asked the travel agent um there there was a really really nice guy and uh, um and and he turned, I, i asked him look can can you do all three and he said how fit are you He said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fit. You know, I, I, I can walk about four, five kilometers without breaking a sweat." Um, and you're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay because um, up there is only about two to three kilometers. So, um, and the next one is about another five kilometers away. So, you should be able to do all three in a day. All good. So here we are, um, seven thirty in the morning, um, and the plan was to go to the first mountain. And he said it will be about ten, ten thirty." and by about 233 you can go to the next and then come back by about 6 o'clock in the afternoon they were spent first part half a kilometer walking as if though it was on flat land no issues whatsoever and they literally you come to a sheer cliff like that okay right. and from that point onwards all the way up it's it's just it's like spider man you have to feel your way up um there are little steps along the way um and then you think okay fine that, that's fine and you're now puffing and panting and you're like a dog that hasn't drunk water for a day your tongue is out it was quite scary as well mm-hmm. the scary <laughs> part wasn't getting up there right at at halfway point you actually have and mind you i didn't have clothes <laughs> right 
I wasn't <laughs> going on a trip. So I, all I had was my uniform, which I generally wear for assignments, which is um, I, have a, I have a pair of jeans and a, and a white shirt like this, right? That's all I have and a couple of t-shirts. So I'm in jeans, right? I'm in jeans. Um, I, I did have a pair of walking shoes because I did want to go out for walks um, and explore the neighborhoods. No way equipped to do this. And then halfway point, you have a full-on um, scaling up of a sheer cliff where you have to put on a harness. Uh, you clip yourself in. And this is not mountain climbing like you would do an outward bound, right? And you have the mountain region people who come in there and yank you up. There are no pulleys, there are no L lions, none of that nonsense, right? So you have right. a little tree and a branch. The rope goes over that. There are two people there doing this, and you're supposed to curl <laughs> yourself up. Now, at this point, I swear to you, I sat down there and thought to myself, I'm a father of two. <laughs> I have a lot more to see in the world. <laughs> do, I, do I really want to be doing this? So plucked up all my courage and I asked the guy, you know, is this it? Right. And I, I thought, okay, after this, you have the church on top. Yeah, 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 this is the toughest part. After this is you're okay. So this is typical like this, you know, Sri Lankan villagers who turn around and say, well, langa the oh, langa, langa me and all that kind of stuff. Right. right? <laughs> so for these guys, it's just next door. I climbed this and your literally heart is beating in your throat. And then when you get up there, you see that there are two more little summits and it's only on the second summit that the church is there. Well, right. now you can't get back down, right? Yeah. Now you're far too much on the journey to kind of ever turn back. So we trudge along and eventually, and this place is called Abune Amata. I, I, I recommend to anyone, um, you really must go there. Um, once in your life, you need to do something like this. It's insane. So Abune Amata, to enter it, the last probably 500 meters or so, 600 meters or so, is a cliff, I kid you not, that is no more than a foot or two max wide, right? And there's a drop, which is roughly about 100 meters, 200 meters, sheer drop like that. So imagine you're on top of um, Sigiriya on one of those cliffs without a handrail on, on either side, okay? So mountain cliff on this side, sheer drop on the other and you have 600 meters just like that you can see the entrance but you know you have to kind of go in there so i sat there uh <laughs> contemplated this said my prayers uh said goodbye to my wife and my children i told myself at least if i die this way they'll have a story to tell how did your father die well he you know <laughs> he tried to do this idiotic thing of going down to Abune Amata and he fell. You know, at least that's better than getting hit by a bus and dying, right? So, solaced myself into saying I will at least, you know, die a proper death. And took that leap of faith and walked. And walked inside and it is this beautiful church inside. Um, very small, very small. Nothing more than probably a 20 by 30 foot um, um, enclosure um, out of rock, carved out beautiful views, uh, amazing vistas. And there was a priest there who apparently does this trek about twice or thrice a day, um, right? Every day, 365 days of the year. So I went and, well, eventually once I have caught my breath and said my prayers and all the rest of it, I, I went and asked him, look, why isn't that you don't put a rail out here? You know, it, it will make so much easier. And, it's, and he said, we don't want tourists. We only want the faithful. And if you have faith, you will make it without a problem. And if you don't have faith, you shouldn't have been here in the first place. It's not a tourist destination. It's a place of worship. My God. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I'm not a Christian, right? So I said that thinking, okay, <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah, maybe. Now, now, now I'm having second thoughts going back because, <laughs> because he's spoken about faith and God and you know, trusting the almighty and all the rest. And I'm thinking, oh, good Lord, you know. So I went, actually, I, <laughs> I went in, I sat down, knelt and prayed to all the gods. Sri Lanka apparently has Tittu Gotiya Devuru. I went and said prayers to all of them. <laughs> and happily walked back and thankfully nothing happened. And, um, and by that time, it was nearly one o'clock in the afternoon. What time so did you start? Um, I started at about seven o'clock in the morning. So what would generally take three hours, I took six 
clearly that shows you how fit I am. So right. from Tigray, I didn't have flights on particular days to get back and they were very expensive. So I hitched a ride from Tigray um, to La Libella. I can't remember the number of kilometers there was, but um, you know, I'll have it in my archive somewhere. It's, it's, it's a good three, 400 kilometers. And they told me that it will take about five to six hours. I left at five o'clock in the morning. We came to um, La Libella at about 2.45. Without even checking in, went in and again found a fantastic guy. Who, and I turned around and said, I know it's going to take more than this long. But if I walk fast enough, can you take me to all the 13 churches and can you make sure that I see it? And they finish off by six. So I had exactly one and a half hours or so by the time I had bought the tickets and all the rest of it. And we walked like crazy. But La Libella is more or less rock hewn. And, and this is what it is, right? When most people think of rock carvings and, um, you know, we, we have a history and a architecture that is very associated with um, stone as well, stonework and stone masonry. Yeah. But what we do is we, we, we carve out these um, rocks and actually take it to a place and set up based on that, right? The difference in, in La Libella is that you literally carve out the church out of the rock itself. So if you have, a, imagine a mountain top like this, right? You literally carve into it and all of the chambers are the rock being carved out. So if you make one mistake, it's gone. Yeah. So you imagine trying to get symmetry going up um, from the mountain, carving in, and the base is actually 30, 40, 50 feet below. And then they go inside and carve out the rock again to make the chambers, which is insane. It's like nothing I've ever seen. It's amazing work. On the way back, coming back to the main city, um, took the flight there to come to Addis Ababa, which is the capital. Tigray also has um, something called the Depression, the Great Depression. Um, it's again like 100 or 200 meters or 300 meters or whatever below sea level um, in the middle of the... the and, and it has... It has um, um, like lakes, which has all forms of chemicals in it and therefore turns different colors. That gorgeous, it's like nothing you've ever seen. It's beautiful. I missed that. I just didn't have the time to go see. And my kids, thankfully, are adventurous as well. The food in Ethiopia, because I was reading somewhere that it's like, uh, most of it is like we eat rice. Theirs is like a flat bread with vegetables. Injira. That's right. They, they have something called injira that they eat. Uh, morning, noon, and night, if they could. But amazingly, even though that's the national food, it is also something that they use only for special locations sometimes. But almost every household um, has the injera seed out there, and they actually ferment it before they make the bread, like tose. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, so injera and beef is probably the staple um, if you can afford the beef. But if not, you would have vegetables and chicken as well. But there's beef is plentiful out there. Um, now, the crazy part is they swear by the fact that if you eat injera, you don't put on weight. I was a climate uh, there, Vidusha. Is it too humid or cold? Well, it depends on which part of Ethiopia you're in. Um, most of Ethiopia um, is a mountainous regions, um, and that's where I, I was. It's bitterly cold. It's really? actually bitterly cold most of the time. Yes, it is. It, it, it has very, very high altitudes. Um, by about five o'clock, six o'clock in the afternoon, um, it starts getting really cold. Um, and you do need to cover yourself up quite well. I suffered uh, a little bit um, in just t-shirts and shirts, but, uh, but it's cold. Um, it's hot as well um, in some parts. Um, during the day, clearly, it can get quite hot. When it rains, it can get quite, um, quite bad. So imagine Noor Elia, right? Um, you're, you're probably twice, I mean, it, it's about, it's about like Noor Elia would be in December would be what it was when I went in. Um, and I think that that's, that's about what it is under normal circumstances. It can vary, but not significantly so. That's quite cool. It is. And, it is and cool. you have 
you have changed my idea of Ethiopia totally because I, for me, my no. is, you know, the sun like a ball of fire. True, and true. That's the, that's a picture we all have about Ethiopia, yeah, right? So Very the, warm. So the, so the desert regions in Ethiopia, that's what it is. They do right. have, they do have um, regions which are completely desert type. Um, and there are some amazing places to see there too. There are still nomadic tribes um, living off the land, very much like the Aborigines um, in there. Um, and there are regions in Ethiopia where you have people living pretty much the same way they live, unlike the Vattas or the Aborigines who have by and large adapted into a more modern way of life. Here, there are large groups of people who are still very much living the way they lived before. And uh, every day, a, f a few number of visitors are allowed to go in, interact with them and come back. Um, so Ethiopia is full of wonders. It, it really is. There are different parts of Ethiopia which are completely, uniquely different. Um, and it's not the scorching sun and the sand that, that would I generally know. be identified with it. If you actually go into the into the capital city, uh, you'll be quite taken aback. Addis is a full-on, proper capital city. Uh, yeah. Parts of it is absolutely gorgeous. They have um, hotels that would rival anywhere else in the world. Um, there are some fantastic palaces um, interwoven with skyscrapers. Um, it, it is quite different. It really is. It's, it's a place that you really must go and take a look at because there are such vast contrasts um, and because it's so big, each region has its own little culture variation of uh, language, um, very much like India in that sense. Since you mentioned um, Indiana Jones, um, you know, the Ark of the Covenant is famously in Ethiopia and Ethiopians believe that the head priest knows where it is. There are two churches that they believe that the water from, un, it's cut, actually cut and there is some water that comes in God knows from where. But they do right. believe it is actually diverted from Jerusalem and holy water actually comes into um, the church compound. Um, so next to Jerusalem, in their, in their belief, um, this is the holiest of places if you really have faith. The church that you have, that you are referring to, actually has earth, which is the... Um, which is part of the church um, in the middle ground, heaven, which is right on top. Um, and, and it is a beautiful um, vaulted ceiling that actually uh, resembles heaven. And then there is um, hell as well. So hell is a 30 meter, 40 meter tunnel, rock hewn tunnel, which is pitch black. There's absolutely no light whatsoever. And you're supposed to take it and have faith and just keep walking until you see the light. <laughs> and in between, somewhere down the line, you actually start losing track of how many feet you've actually walked. And you start panicking, right? Because you don't see light. <laughs> but the guide did tell me, just hold my hand and keep walking, which is what I did, right? And then eventually you start thinking, e is it a trick? Or is there light? Because you can see this tiny speck of light and it starts growing, 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 growing. Eventually, then you see bright light and you get out. And that is supposed to resemble man's walk from evil to righteousness um, and faith that will guide you through. Amazing So you stuff. went through hell? Oh, yes, yes. Literally. And I cursed myself for it because I was thinking, oh, dear. Imagine if the dude just ran off. What the hell do you do, right? <laughs> I'm holding his hand. I have no idea where I am. It's pitch black. And the, and the guy isn't even taking a torch. So if Sama wants to plan a trip uh, to the cold areas and all these beautiful churches that you explained, what would be their ideal itinerary? Well, genuinely, I think if you're going, it depends on how much time you have. Ideally, I would say at least have two weeks. Addis is one place you should because there are some fantastic locations, the capital city itself. But do that last because then you're in the city and then you, know, you can go back to the airport without too much of an issue. I think Tigray is a region you need about four to five days. Um, Hawassa, if you want, 
um, wildlife and sanctuaries and um, mountain tops and but not so much of the history per se. But Hawassa is a lovely place um, if you want scenery and um, wildlife. Um, then I think you should go to Lalibela for sure. Uh, again, don't have just one or two days, have about three to four days because there are parts of Lalibela that is not touristic, which actually has some beautiful churches as well. Those four, I think is a good start. If you have more time, then once you go into Tigray, from Tigray, you can do excursions right across the region. Um, and there are beautiful churches right through the region. And so park yourself in Tigray and then explore all of those right around, come back to Tigray and then come back to um, Addis and then go to the other places. But Tigray is a, in, in my opinion, if you are, if you're going and really want diversity, park yourself in Tigray and then do all, because things like, um, um, all the major churches um, on top of cliffs and all the rest of it you'll find in the Tigray region. Um, and also the De Great Depression um, and so on and so forth are all, all around there. But it takes time to go there. How, in, in general, how safe it is to travel around uh, Vidusha? For me, it was perfectly safe. Nothing happened to me. Nobody tried to pickpocket me. Nobody tried to be funny. Nobody even looked at me sideways. Um, but I was told to be cautious. And I guess that is a that is a thing you should be anywhere. No, I mean you can get yeah, mugged in yeah. London. I was mm. mugged in London, so you know. Um, so it's not to say one city is safer than the other, but I think it's good to be cautious because purely because nighttime is a revelrous time out there, um, and it takes only one idiot, right? Uh, like all things, yeah, to spoil your holiday. So your yeah, best yeah. seven eight. I think you're best kind of quietly going in and sleeping. Okay then, Vidusha, thank you so much uh, for actually changing our perception about uh, Ethiopia. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Much obliged. It was fantastic to talk to you guys. Thank you so much.